welcome back to yet another video now in this video we're going to add materials into our kitchen scene in the fastest way possible using the V-Ray material library that comes with V-Ray 5 and curated by Chaos Group. So to access your default V-Ray library you can click on the asset editor and then you'll get this left arrow key or the button so click on that and it would expand the library here. Now this is my own library which I'm going to close so right click close I will be showing how you can create your own library in the next video. So if you're opening this for the first time, you will get an option to download these materials into your local drive. And if you want to specify a specific folder, you want to download it into, or you can specify that later as well. You can go to settings and under configuration, you have an option called download location. So if you change this, the materials will be changed to this folder. So that's a quick tip into those who want to save space in their C drive. So in the default library, you have different categories. And then of course, we have various materials for these categories. So we'll quickly apply some materials into our scene and then apply it onto our objects. So to use the default materials, you will need to drag this into your asset editor here. So the first thing which I'm going to drag is the flooring. So let's go to wood and laminate. Scroll down and you'll find flooring parquet herringbone B01 120 centimeters. So just drag this, click and drag this to your asset editor here. So now it's part of your asset editor. You can also rename this if you'd like. So for example, A underscore flooring underscore wood. All right. And you can also tweak the values, but I would suggest that you leave these values as is because it comes with the bitmaps that Chaos Group provides. Uh, if you want to learn more about all of these materials and it's a good way to learn how to create materials is to simply drag these materials and check the bitmaps and all of that which chaos group is used to create this material so as you can see we have a reflection map a bump map and so on so there's two ways to apply this material in your scene the first way and the easiest way i would suggest is that you select this material each time you select a new material in V-Ray, it also changes here in the SketchUp default tray. So you can see that it changes. So with this material selected, I'm going to close this window. I'm going to apply it on my floor. So all you need to do is enter the group. You can select the face or using the select tool, then press B to activate the bucket tool and then just click once to apply this material. The other way is to, let me just undo Ctrl Z, is to select the face and then go to your asset editor, right click here and click on apply to selection. You can also apply to layer. So it's a good idea to have consistent layers in your SketchUp model so that it's easier to apply materials. So in our case, I'm going to apply it to selection. So now you can see that it's applied in our scene. Now the problem is, is that this material is scaled down really small. So if you want to check the size of this material or the seamless texture, just go to your default layer, click on edit. And you can see that it's 254 mm by 254 mm. What I would suggest is that you scale it to the correct size, which you can see in the VDA default library, which is 120 centimeters. So in this case, since our model is in mm, you can type in 1200 mm. So this is the actual size of the texture and the material. Now 1200 for all those in feet and inches is around four feet. All right, so you apply the first material. Now let's check this material in our interactive render. So let me go back to scene two and also switch on the sunlight and the environment light because I'm going to be using that setup for the rest of the course. So go to lights, click on sunlight and switch this on. And you can switch off the dome light. So select the dome light and switch this off. And also go to your settings, go to environment and switch on the environment light as well. All right, so now with scene two selected, I'm going to click on render with V-Ray Interactive. All right, great. So now you can see that it has a great impact in the scene and makes it look much more better with our wooden flooring. I would also need to add a skirting, but I'll add that later. Let me just switch off the sunlight since it makes the space a little burnt out. I'm just going to use the environment light for some time and maybe just increase the environment light. Keep it around two so there's more light entering the scene. So we'll use the environment light and maybe towards the end after the render, we can use the sunlight as well. We can save multiple renders, so it's not an issue. 
All right, now I'm going to add this to the history here. So click on add. And now we can jump to the next material. So stop the render. And let's jump to the next material, go to asset editor. Now I would suggest that for the fridge here that you use a car paint material. So select the car paint. So you can drag any of this car paint materials it can be aluminum, can be gray. So let's drag this car flakes gray. Go back to your materials here and let's drag this in. All right, I like this material and we can apply this on our fridge. So close the asset editor. This is our fridge, just enter the group and then press B to activate the bucket tool and apply it on the fridge. It's also a good idea that after you apply the material that you click on something called triplanar projection world, which will uniformly apply the material on the UVs of this object and also makes the UVs perfectly uniform so that none of your materials get skewed. I generally get into the habit of clicking on triplanar projection world so that I don't have to correct any wrong UVs applied on an object. I'll similarly apply it here at the bottom as well. And I'll apply it for the body as well. All right, so I've applied my fridge material as well. Now I can go back to scene two and then run an interactor render again. So you can see that we have a nice glossy fridge which is reflecting the light as well. You can, of course, adjust the values if you feel that this fridge is a little too reflective. Simply go to Acid Editor, go back here, and you can reduce the reflection values. So before we head to the next video, I would recommend you guys to try and add some of these materials to your kitchen model here, and then render out an interactive scene. So if you want to save this render, you can click here on Save, and then save it to your local drive as a PNG. So go ahead, try rendering it out with different materials. But I will of course show you guys how to create actual materials in V-Ray like high gloss laminates, or dado tiles, lacquered glass, and then add some decor and a whole lot more. So stay tuned. It's going to get a lot more interesting. This was to just show you a quick way to create renders with the default materials in case your clients is paying you really low and you need to get a render done super fast. So the next video, I will show you how to create your own awesome V-Ray library, which you can use for future projects and which will definitely speed up your V-Ray workflow and create awesome renders in the fastest time possible. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.